Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome to this lesson on NURBS in Bezier Curve Modeling. Now, if you're enrolled in the course Blender 3D Modeling for Beginners, this is lesson seven of that course. So what we're going to be doing in this lesson is we're going to be working a little bit with the uh, different types of modeling objects known as NURBS objects and also Bezier curves and circles. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my window here. I have uh, two windows. I have two window panes in my view here. So I'm just going to take this one over on the right and I'm just going to move it over out of the way a little bit. And I have also a plane here that we used in, as a backdrop for one of the previous lessons. So I'm just going to delete this, X delete. That way it'll be a little bit easier to see when we work on these. So I'm going to choose 7, which brings us into the top view. That's 7 on the numpad. And as you can see, um, any keystrokes that I do on a keyboard or mouse movements, you'll be able to see in this little box over here on the left. So what I'm going to do now is, is uh, choose Control up arrow on the keyboard. And that brings us to full screen in Blender. That way we're going to be able to see a little bit easier what we're doing. And we're going to look at a little bit about the uh, NURBS and the Bezier curves. So I'm going to choose Shift A. That brings us into our Add menu. And as you might remember before, under Mesh we have our different primitives that we can use. But we also have, under Curves, we have the NURBS type modeling and we also have Bezier curves. So what are these NURBS curves and Bezier curves and the circles? Well, you can kind of think of this as just a different method of modeling. Uh, it basically uses different mathematical algorithms to create this. And in fact, when you think of the difference between a NURBS curve and a Bezier curve, um, mainly it's the type of algorithm they use to create this modeling. So I don't want you to get caught up on the different, different types here. You can always look it up if you want, you know, some a more detailed explanation of why these two uh, different types of curves are available in Blender. But I'm going to show you basically how you might use these. So let's start out with a NURBS curve. So I'm just going to choose that and we see immediately a curve there. So if we tab in edit mode here, you can see that this particular curve has some control points which we can select. So when you select these and we can choose G to move it, we can also select the end one here, choose E to extrude. So if we extrude around like this, you can see how we can start to create a curve. And once you create created your curve, you can do things like G to move and adjust how the curve looks. And then if you want to actually complete your curve, you can choose the two endpoints by choosing first the one endpoint and then shift select the other endpoint and choose F and that will actually complete your curve. Now if we choose control up arrow to go back to our display here, you can see that once you create a curve, you have a new item over here on your properties menu. And this is an object data menu, but it's specifically, specifically for the curve that you created. So I'm going to choose this. So there's a few things that you can do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, under fill, I'm going to choose full. And under bevel, I'm going to increase the depth just by pulling this out. And you can see that creates sort of like a tubing or hosing type of uh, object. You can also up the resolution. And the resolution has to do with, once you render the object, is it detailed enough for your render? So this particular one is a NURBS curve, and we created basically a circle out of this. But I'm going to tab back into object mode, and let's try the Bezier. So I'm going to do a Shift A, go to Curve, and choose Bezier. And I'm going to just move this over here so we can see it. Tab into edit mode. And you can see this one also has some control points. But once you start working with this, you can see that it reacts just a little bit different. If we choose E to extrude, it extrudes. We can also rotate these control points. We can choose S to scale them. And I'm going to choose E to extrude. And I'm just going to bring it back over here. Shift select this other control point, the beginning one, and choose F to complete our curve. And we can also go to our properties menu here and we can do the same thing with the Bezier curve. We can choose full, we can up the depth of it, and also the resolution if we need to. 
And then for trying to make a certain shape, say if I chose seven on the numpad to go to the top view, I can G move this, R rotate these points. and pretty much get whatever shape I want to make with this. So let's create something a little bit more useful. I'm going to tab back in object mode. I'm going to choose X to delete and select this one and choose X to delete. And I'm going to do a shift A, go back to our curve menu, and I'm going to create this time a NURBS circle. So we have our circle there. I'm also going to do a shift A and create curve, Bezier curve, so that they're together there. And on the Bezier curve, I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to choose to rotate along the Z axis 90 degrees. So R, Z, 90. I'm going to tab back into object mode. I'm going to choose my NURB circle and come over to my properties here. And under where it says bevel object, I'm going to change this to the Bezier curve. And as soon as I do that, you can see that it's created this interesting object because what it's doing is it's taking the properties of the length of this Bezier curve. So I'm going to take my curve here and I'm going to rotate it along the X 90 degrees. So R X 90. And I'm just going to move this over so we can work with it a little bit easier. So I'm going to choose one to go into my front view. Well, that's one on the numpad. And I'm going to, while I have this while I have our Bezier curve selected, I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm just going to select one of these handles here and choose G to move it around. And you can see as soon as I do, you're actually changing your NURBS circle here. So you can use this Bezier curve as a way to sculpt your uh, NURBS circle. So I'm just going to rotate this, move it over a little bit. You can also choose E extrude. So this might be a, you know, an interesting way to create like a wine glass or some other type of glass. You can also change the properties of the handle by choosing the handle here and choosing B. And you can change the type from automatic to let's say vector. And what this does is it gives this segment of the curve a more uh, a more sharp type of property. So if I choose E, extrude this, choose E again, extrude it, you can see where this type of the property gives it like these sharp edges that you can use in contrast to the curve edges. Now you can go back if you want to and select this, choose V and change it back to automatic and then you get your curved surface back the way that it was. So that's kind of an example of how you can use the NURBS surfaces and a Bezier curve in conjunction with each other in order to create an object. Let's look at another interesting use of these properties. So I'm going to choose this object here, choose X on the keyboard, delete. Go ahead and delete my Bezier curve as well. X delete. And I'm going to choose 7 on my numpad to get into top view and choose Shift A. And in this case, I'm going to create another NURB circle. And I'm also going to choose Shift A and go in the curve menu and choose Path. And let's go ahead and choose S to scale this path and just make it about the size of the diameter of the circle here. Now I'm going to select the circle and go back into our curve menu here and I'm going to change the field type to full. I'm going to move the bevel up and you can bump up the resolution if you want to. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm just going to B box select this side of the uh, circle. I'm just going to bring it out a little bit. Same thing with this other side, B box select and just move that out a little bit. So basically what I'm doing here is creating a link in a chain. And you can adjust this as you want to. Now I'm going to choose A to select all. I'm going to choose Shift D and select off of that and just move that over here. And I'm going to rotate it along the X by 90 degrees. So R, X, 90 on your key, on your numpad. Hit enter. 
and that creates our basic chain here. So if I go into one front view, I can see it fairly well here, and I'm just going to move this up a little bit so it looks more like a chain link. And I'm going to tab back into object mode. Now, you can also come back to your depth here and move this up if you want to look, make it have a little bit more depth. Okay, with our basic link here, what we can do is go into our modifier menu. I'm going to choose add modifier. I'm going to add an array modifier. And as soon as you do that, you can see that it's adding another step of your object into an array. So what we need to do is we need to back up this a little bit. So along the X, I'm just going to choose this and I'm going to pull it back a little bit. And it's being a little bit quick for me. So I'm just going to move that up to about that point right there. Maybe a 0.75 would be better. And that way we can change the count. We can up that count and we'll get our basic chain link here. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this path that we created in order to create a more flexible way that we can uh, move this chain around. So in order to do that, I'm going to select our chain here. I'm going to add another modifier. And in this case, under the deform menu, I'm going to choose curve. And if I scroll down to the curve menu under object, I'm going to choose that and then choose NURBS path. And I also need to scroll up to the array modifier and I'm going to change this from fixed count, which is this count here that we added four to, change this to fit curve. And once you choose fit curve, you want to come to the curve here and choose NURBS path. And this will allow it to work with the curve modifier that we just created. So with this, I'm going to come up to the outliner here because it's kind of hard to see that um, path curve that we created. And I'm just going to choose NURBS path. So I'm going to choose 7 to go into top view, tab into edit mode, come in here and choose the end of the curve, and choose E to extrude. And when you do that, you'll notice that it starts to create the length of the chain in really any direction that you're creating your curve. And you can see this can be real useful as far as creating a chain. You can create another items such as maybe a roller coaster type of track. Uh, there's just a lot of options you can do with this. And also you can go back and choose one of the control points and you can move it around if, if you need to. And this gives you a lot of flexibility as far as creating something that is more like a, dy a dynamic object and changes as you are uh, moving your control points around. Another thing that you can do with these control points, say if you wanted to twist this chain a little bit, you can choose a control point and choose control T and you can move the mouse and you can see that it's rotating the chain. Now you wouldn't want to go too far because it's going to cause a, you know, too much of a deformation, but if you need to twist this around, you can do the, do it that way. So then if I tab back into object mode, you can see that we have a fairly nice chain created there. So this is just a few interesting things that you can do using the NURBS object and the Bezier curves. Feel free to dive in and create more objects using these type of um, surfaces. Another thing that I like to use curves for is if I do a Shift A and let's say we create a Bezier curve. Let me just move this out of the way. And I'm going to scale it up a little bit and go to my curve menu. I'm going to change this to the full fill mode and let's bring the depth up a little bit and the resolution up a little bit and I'm going to tab into edit mode and in this case I'm just going to choose E to extrude and this is a very easy way to create something like a muffler on a car or some other kind of tubes. One thing that I've used it before also is a thing like a handrail so if I choose one front view move these up to where they're pretty much straight, choose E extrude, R to rotate, bring it down where it's vertical there, E to extrude, bring it down like so, go into 7 top view, and then of course you want to adjust your top view so that it's straight.
one front view, choose this one here, heat extrude, rotate, heat to extrude, bring it down. So something like that where you're creating sort of a handrail type of object. I've also used these to create uh, not only tubing but sort of uh, like a wiring situation. So if I tab back into object mode and come over to my bevel depth, I can bring this way down. So that's more, it looks more like a wiring type of thing. And tab into edit mode, choose A to select all, choose Shift D to duplicate, and I'm just going to bring this over here, scale it down a little bit, bring it very close together, tab back into object mode. So in this case, you have like two sets of, or a set of wires that is running together. Of course, you might probably spend a little bit more time getting them exactly uh, positioned where you want it, but it can be really interesting and fun to work with uh, the curved surface type of modeling. And when you think about the differences between polygon type modeling, in other words, shift A using the this mesh and using these primitives to, to model with, and the uh, NURBS type of modeling, it's not really necessary to think of one method as being better than the other. It really depends on what you're working with. And I encourage you to try both methods when you're modeling. Try to do different things with these type of objects. And as you work with them, you'll begin to have a feeling of what might be used in one situation over a, a, another one. You know, which method would be better in the particular modeling situation that you're doing at the time. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. In the next lesson, lesson eight, we're going to be taking a little bit closer look at these modifiers that are used in Blender. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.